Uh, just a quick little video for you guys. Um, I was just going to do a, a quick little run of the Invercar here and I thought I might as well record a video because you guys seem to be interested in it. Um, I'm full of the cold at the moment so apologies for the fact that I have virtually no voice. Those of you following TPA may well be aware of the fact she's been off the road for probably going on three months now. The reason for that is because we're missing a wheel. More importantly, we're missing wheel studs. Um, I went to get a puncture repair done because I had a very slow puncture on this, this wheel um, from around the bead. Um, and when we were putting the wheel back on, one of the studs snapped. And one of the things we have discovered since it's like clambering into my tip of a garage, um, this is what's left of the stud which actually snapped. Give me two seconds to get the camera to focus. Um, and what we have discovered is that these studs are actually quite hard to find. On the wheel end, they use these, which are normal mini wheel bolts. Sorry, wheel nuts, if terminology correct. Uh, but the end that goes into the hub is, as far as we've been able to figure out, is 3 8 inch BSF. And finding screw in studs that are smaller than quarter inch seems to be really hard. Like, really, really hard. Um, the only one, well, in high tensile steel anyway, I've been able to find a few that are intended for things like exhaust manifolds and stuff like that, but nothing in decent steel. Um, so we're kind of scratching our heads a bit at this point. I am next going to be trying getting some 3 8 inch high tensile bolts um, and use some conical washers in the place of the original wheel nuts to locate everything and see if that works, just screwing into the original thread in the hub. Um, I have also had an offer from somebody to make me up some studs on their lathe, so I may well take them up on that. The biggest challenge I'm going to have there is finding one of the ones that came out that's sufficiently unmangled that they can use them for measurements. Uh, because this, even the three which did come out were fairly beat up by the time they were out of the hub. Um, I think this this hub had suffered because I'm fairly certain that somebody had over-tightened the wheel nuts in the past. And I think that is what had done them in originally, and it, it was just a case of when we went to put that wheel back on, the one just decided it had had enough. And I noticed when when I went to look at things closer after that, I discovered that uh, two of the three remaining studs were also damaged. Um, one of them was quite distinctly bent, and one of the other ones was cracked. So that was just kind of unsurprising that we'd had one snap once I discovered that. Luckily, the ones on the other two wheels um, seem to be alright, so I'm not going to worry about them too much just now. I'll just obviously be careful when I'm putting the wheel nuts on. Um, I will probably get a hold of a, a, a tap and die set in Imperial size just so I can make sure that the threads are chased out and kept clean and such. Uh, because obviously after 40, 43 years? I'm trying to do mental math in my head, 1973? 1973 to 2019, so what, end of 2019? So, yeah, 42 going on 43 years, and they're full of a fair bit of crap, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but, so she hasn't been started since the, um, since that wheel stood snapped, and I think that was back in start of September, I think it was. So I figured we would just start her up, let her run for a few minutes, and I thought it would be quite interesting just to see how she starts after sitting for that long. Assuming the battery's not stone dead, but it shouldn't be really, it's virtually brand new. Um, and I would see how things go, and I thought, I might as well, as I'm here, I might as well stitch the camera on and uh, let you guys come along for the ride. Um, the heated ducting is off at the moment, because I'm in the process of looking at installing a booster fan. Uh, but everything else should be fine. It doesn't really leak oil anymore, so, but I will check it anyway. It's tonight. Stand on my head and try and put the engine prop up one handed. <sighs> yeah, it's reading a little bit over full, but. 
like I said, it will read a bit high because there's probably no oil, the oil is probably drying back out of the oil cooler and everything. So. She did have an oil change like 20 miles before the incident happened and it was spot on then, so. Alright, well, shall we have a look and see how things go? I might as well leave the light on. <coughs> yeah, my, my garage is a complete tip. I need to do something with it. Focus camera. Especially as that Krypton machine that's buried, un buried under the sheets of insulation, um, that needs to be going away to a new home soon because I've bought a Sun 1215 motor tester which will be replacing it. Um, and it needs to go in the same spot. Which is also why I kind of need to get this thing moving because I need to get it out of the garage before I can get that out. <laughs> So yeah, we need to fix the wheel, pro the, the the lack of a wheel problem. Ooh. I leave this switched on when I'm uh, just using the car in the garage because it acts as a nice visual reminder to me that the main switch is still on. Because I've got a master switch installed down there. Neutral. Plus, I was having an electric fuel pump, as it means I can just have it prime the float bowl. I don't have to faff around with that. All right, we're on full choke. I'm not worrying too much about the starting going oil pressure because the oil pressure in this thing usually comes up pretty quickly. So, let's see what happens. And off she goes. Even smoking. I was kind of expecting it. I was kind of expecting it to smoke a bit, but uh, no, apparently not. Choke and go off now. Should just give her a bit of throttle and get it help her get warmed up. Maybe. It's maybe a little bit previous about turn the choke off there, so. forget when it's been a while what a lovely sounding little engine this is. Oh, I lost a tube. Oh, now one's got a dodgy connection. Yeah, I have a slightly sticky throttle, but it actually works quite nicely as cruise control, so... 
and for setting for fast idle for warm up and things, so I'm kind of intended just to leave it that way. Yeah, she's filthy. I need to get the seat properly cleaned. It's full of bits of other car. Ah, just the joys of a car that's not been in everyday use for a while. I've got some little plastic caps to go on the number plate. Alright, it's probably enough for now. There we go, she'll actually idle properly now. I'm just going to call that good for now because I haven't got my exhaust extension on so I'm slowly filling the entire garage and the rest of the house up with exhaust fumes because this garage is not as well sealed from the rest of the house as it really should be so I'll we'll call that so yeah we'll call time on that for now yeah I've just been clearing the freezer out I have some stuff I need to stick in the bin um, well, yeah, that, that's that for now, I think. I just figured you guys could come along for the, the well, for the ride, so to speak, even though we didn't actually go anywhere. Um, and you could just get a bit of an update on where TPA is currently sitting. I should comment that um, it looks like we might... Sorry, I meant to mention this earlier. It looks like we might have managed to find a source of a second-hand hub, which would hopefully solve my, real, my wheel stud problems. Uh, so I'll keep you updated. I mean, if once she does get back on the road, um, I will obviously record a little video just to commemorate the occasion. And I am, I'm kind of investigating options for recording onboard video because the, the problem I've got is the phone, the, bleh, the mount I have for my phone, which is by far the best video recording device I have, is rubbish. You just get so much shake through it that the video is completely unusable. So I need to try and find something which mounts a little bit more solidly. Um, especially this YouTube of... Sorry, this phone does not mute notifications when I'm recording video. Apologies for the buzzing. Um, I need to try and come up with a better solution for mounting the camera so I can actually get usable video. Um, the mic isn't too bad, but the... Uh, the, the things I just need a proper way to actually attach it to the car, so I am looking into that. If I do get that working, you will probably see a few more just me having random random rambles about stuff while out driving, or just taking you guys out for a drive somewhere type videos from me, uh, because I've had a few comments from people saying they would like to see more of that, so we shall we shall see what happens. <clears throat> the uh, poor scruffy um, clear coat lacking Activa will shortly be going into BL Autos to get what's probably going to wind up being pretty much a complete front suspension rebushing um, because I've got a failed bush in one of the um, lower control arms which is making it pull to the right under acceleration um, and there are quite a few clonks and creaks there which have been there ever since I got the car so I think I will just be basically throwing it at them and saying fix it. Um, she's also going to need a set of tyres and she needs an exhaust so it's going to be an expensive old month with this car which is a bit of a tricky one to, to justify given what Xantias are worth or not worth as the case may be. But the thing I've got is I really, really like the car and to try and replace it is probably I'm probably going to be looking at something like a sort of five year old Volvo V50 or V70 or something and I'm not going to be getting much change probably out of five or six grand for that so I'm much more inclined just to spend a bit of money on keeping the car I actually like on the road. And it's quite difficult to find something which gives the same blend of performance and comfort that the Xanti Activa does. So we'll just wait and see. Still trying to find a home with the larder, which is just kind of laid up for the winter at the moment, parked on some concrete slabs to keep the tyres off the grass. Um, I don't know what to do with it. So I kind of need to try and find some proper storage, I think, and just that's not extortionately expensive. 
um, or miles and miles away. I mean, I have had a good offer um, over in North Wales, but it's a long, a long trip to put a car into storage and to get it out again. So I would really like to try and find something that's a bit more local. So, because if I can get that sold, I can then crank some of the funds from that back into maybe getting some of the paintwork on this done properly or getting a few more of the jobs on this ticked off or on the van ticked off even though running wise it's actually doing all right at the moment it's just there's, there's, there's perpetual issues with the coach work i mean that's that's what only a coach built camp is about it's it's a game of whack-a-mole with water ingress and rotten wood and stuff like that uh, and obviously the other thing I really need to do is get some shelving installed in my garage so that I can do something about this nonsense that... And obviously get the rest of the lights wired up as well. I mean, I've got a bunch more for things like this. I think there's another three of them stacked up in the corner as well, which will be going on the, the other wall over there, as I've got here, so I'll actually have decent lighting in here. Um, and, well, that's about it. I think I've, I've rambled enough for one uh, video I think so I will call it a day here and hope to catch you next time bye guys